Hello, and welcome to Oracle Rack Node 1. My name is Steve Hamilton, and I'll be your instructor for this module. Okay, let's get started. In this lesson, we will talk about Oracle's Rack Node 1, or it's also referred to as Rack 1 Node. We'll look at converting the Rack database to Rack 1 Node, and vice versa, converting a traditional Rack into a One Node Rack. Brand new in Oracle 12c, we have the ability to create a single instance environment. Traditionally, we would create a multiple instance environment, kind of in an active-active role. Here, we will show you the advantages of using Oracle's Rack 1 node. And at the very end, there will be a quiz on Oracle Rack 1 node. So first of all, what is Oracle's Rack 1 architecture? Or, or what does it provide you? In a traditional clustered environment, we would have multiple servers, node one and node two. Each server would have their own instance up and running, and both of those instances would be available. So I could connect to either node one or node two and still access information. There's really no failover involved. There's no active passive role. But within Rack 1 node, we have what's referred to as an active passive scenario, where you're only coming into one specific node, and in the event that that node goes down, you'll have to wait and suspend and recreate the connections on the surviving node, and that's more of a passive scenario. What Oracle will tell you is there no less than a 15 or no more than a 15 minute failover. So the advantages of Rack 1 node basically is for those people that do not require 100% 24 by 7. In the event, if they had a node failure, they could suspend processing for 15 some odd minutes and then transfer processing over to the surviving node. Keep in mind that Rack 1 node also does not give me additional throughput. So in a traditional Rack environment, if you have multiple servers and each server can handle 50 users and you're in a three node server, that means you might be able to handle 150 users. In a Rack 1 node environment, if you have a two node server and each server can handle 50 users, but really all 100 users are going through the first node which might be taxing that node. If the node was only designed for 50 users, you can only really handle 50 users. So it does give us some capabilities for failover, but for additional throughput, it doesn't give us that additional processing power. The second node is strictly there waiting to be failed over to. The advantages of Rack 1 node is it's less pricing than traditional Rack, but it does not give us the automatic failover requirements that traditional clustering provides us. It is installed the same way as traditional clustered environments. It is conceptually the same. You will have a grid account. You will have an Oracle account. You will install the grid infrastructure software. You will lay down the clustering. You will install the database software and then create the clustered database. However, it's all going to be created on one node in the event that that node fail, fails, will all be transferred over to a surviving node. Within Rack 1 node, both servers are not active. You have one active instance and you have one inactive instance. Both servers are up and running, but that secondary server is just waiting there in a passive mode, waiting for the failure or waiting for node 1 to go away. Now here's the other thing that happens within Rack 1 node. If you shut down node 1 and you start up node 2, or if you shut down the instance on node 1 and then start it up, it may start up on that secondary node. So you don't necessarily have a lot of control. Within Rack 1 node, there may be occasions where one node may have two instances. And this is not typical configuration under traditional Rack. So in a Rack 1 node, you could have one node with two database instances. The advantages of Rack 1 node is that we do not have automatic failover. However, the failover is not going to require any more than 15 minutes. 
it is substantially less expensive than traditional clustering. So if you feel that, you know, I need clustering in my environment, but I can't pay for traditional clustering, I can use Rack One Node, and then I can have no more than a 15 minute downtime. And the other thing to keep in mind in a Rack One Node, you may have two instances on one server. It's going to operate the same way the traditional rack operates. You're going to have shared disks, you're going to have your voting disk, your OCR disk, your online redo log files, your control files, the whole shoot and match. You're going to have the grid infrastructure, you'll have ASM, you'll have clusterware, you've got your rack scan, you have your VIP, you have your high availability VIP, and it does provide for in easy instance relocation. So the installation is going to be very, very similar to traditional rack. The only difference is we only have one active node. It is going to be less expensive than traditional rack. It still provides us high availability with no more than a guaranteed 15 minute downtime. If you're familiar with the installation of traditional rack, you can easily install rack one node because they're virtually identical. It's easier to patch servers because you can go out and you can patch the passive node, fail over to the passive node, and then patch the active node and then fail back over. It is totally compatible with 11GR2 as well as 12C. As a matter of fact, Rack1 node was originally introduced in Oracle 11GR2. Now the things to keep in mind is a failure event is determined by an abnormal termination of services. So a shutdown normal, a shutdown transactional, a shutdown immediate is a normal shutdown. A shutdown abort is a failure event. If you issue a shutdown abort, that could cause a failure to switch over to the surviving node. You could use DBCA to create or connect to your Rack1 database. Keep in mind that Rack1 node is, full, is fully compatible with the multi-tenant architecture. In the multi-tenant architecture, everything is really controlled at the container level. So if the container level is up, the pluggable databases are up. But if the pluggable databases are up, so is the container. But a pluggable database can be down and the container database can still be up. To install Rack1 node, you're gonna go through DBCA and you are going to create a traditional database. You will come under the advanced section to create your cluster database. Now, by the way, you've already installed your cluster software and your database software. To do this, you're strictly using the DBCA utility after you've installed the database software. When it says database type, under database type, you're gonna select rack one node. You also select if it's gonna be a general purpose database, a custom database, or a data warehouse. But the database type is really what you're after the templates is just allowing you to configure certain database parameters. You'll provide the traditional database name and instance name. In a 12C environment, you're gonna determine if it's a container database or not. I always like to create it as a container database, and by default, you can create multiple pluggable databases. You'll determine if it's admin managed or policy managed. If it's policy managed, then you can create the server pool. If it's admin managed, then you don't need to create a server pool. So here, we're gonna create a general purpose database that is going to be rack node one that is admin managed. You're going to provide the same information, the server pool information, the VIP, the rack scan. You will also provide the database name and the database prefix. Now keep in mind, Oracle is automatically going to go bolt on like the numbers. So if on node one, it'll be ORCL one. On node two, it's going to be ORCL two. It's then going to ask if you're going to register this with Enterprise Manager Express, as well as running the cluster verify utility. I don't particularly like to run the Cluster Verify utility periodically. I'm just not real comfortable with it yet on an Oracle 12C environment. So I typically uncheck this box. If you're using Oracle 12C Cloud Control, you would register this with Cloud Control. Um, natively out of the gate, you're gonna get Enterprise Manager Express. It's then gonna come up and ask you, well, what nodes do you wish to deploy to? And you will deploy to the second node, because keep in mind, the software, the database, everything has to reside on that secondary node. Even though it's not up and running, it still has to reside on that second node. You'll be prompted for the appropriate usernames and passwords. 
You will also be prompted for your ASM disk groups. Again, rack node one, effectively this is a rack install. Everything's gonna be deployed to an ASM disk group. We'll have a disk group data, we'll have a disk group F FRA. If you're only creating one pluggable database, it's gonna ask you, do you want to deploy the sample schemas? And then it's gonna ask you to configure the SGA. These SGAs will be configured identically across all nodes within the rack, even though it's an active passive situation. Then we're just gonna go ahead and say create the database. And it's going to create the database and the primary database will be on node one. The secondary database will be on node two. In the event that node one fails, we will recreate all the connections on node two. Node two could very likely have instances ORCL1 as well as ORCL2. Once ORCL1 comes back online, ORCL1 will now be the active instance where ORCL2 would be the passive instance. When it comes up and asks us, it says, hey, wait a minute, we're giving you a warning here because you're not periodically running the cluster verification checks. We're gonna say, we're okay with that because that was a, a conscious choice on our part. And again, I pretty much agree that we shouldn't be doing that. Then it's gonna give us a database summary that we're creating this database on this node. It's a rack node one database and go ahead and hit finish. At this point in time, using DBCA, it, we will have created a rack one node instance on node one and node two. If we want to convert from a rack node one database to additional rack database, we will use the server control utility. And it's basically gonna be server control convert database dash C and then the database name. So it's pretty straightforward. What happens, it will create server pools for each instance and the admin servers will come will be converted along with all of their other services. So you use server control to convert a rack node one database to a traditional rack database. A rack may be easily converted to a rack one, uses the same binaries, and that can be done with the server control utility as well. So server control will be used to convert rack one or rack one node to rack, as well as rack to rack one node. Please go out and download the quiz on the course page under the course materials tab, take the quiz or take the interactive online quiz. Thank you for viewing.